So Fatima bint Qais went to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa sallam. I want you to listen to every word I say about this. It will sound very simple. But let's <coughs> think. Maybe we think we'll fall asleep. So she came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did she say? She said, Ya Rasulullah, I, I want to divorce my husband. Prophet didn't say anything. She continued. Second sentence. She said, He's a very good man. Prophet knew who he was. It was Habu Bibi. Because he was someone who beat the wife also. I mean, in the sense, with their husbands. Then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said to her, Are you prepared? What did he give you as a dowry? So she said, Oh, gave me a beautiful garden, a very expensive garden. And gardens at the time must have been the most expensive kind of things that people possessed in Badina at the time. It's in the middle of the desert. She said, He gave me a beautiful garden. So the Prophet said, Are you prepared to give the garden back to him? She said, yes. Prophet called the husband. Prophet said to him, the wife wants a divorce. She will give back to you the garden that you gave her as a dowry. Give her the divorce. And he gave her the divorce. Of course, we know this today as being, as being, being the form of divorce which is called khula. Ula is where the wife gives back the dowry for the freedom. Okay, so here's the hadith. Here in I sitting, giving the hadith, wanting to turn the page. I went back to the hadith. I said, but you know, half my life I spent in the reconciliatory talks between men and women, husband and wife. That's my job. I do that as a living. For a long time I did that. As a social worker, I did that. As a chef, I did that. As the imam, I did that. First thing you say, what do you say? Titi, you know, you say your husband is a good man, but why do you, do you know what's waiting for you out there? You know, what's wrong with you? I mean, how many children do you have? You know, does he suffer for you? And, uh, you see, he's a good man, so why can't you leave him? You know, and you think as Imam or as a woman is up to something, you know, so, uh, you know, yeah, my son, let's just put lights, you know, call the husband, and, you know, make half sessions within three, four, five, ten sessions, you know, and try and get them together, you know, and try and save the marriage, isn't it? What do we think? Save the marriage, save the marriage. And that's what everybody says. My father saying that, the chef, the imam, the MJC, Iksa, whatever, busy with, you know, we have a whole organization called FAMSA, Family Mediation of South Africa, the whole national organization that deals only with reconciliation. Even the Nabi says, I didn't even ask her one single question, not one single question. Why? There's no question to you. Would you ask a question? Yes. Of course you would. Every one of you in this matter would ask a question. Whether we ask to ask a question or not ask to ask a question, we will ask a question. And after the fact, we'll also say, My father doesn't have a Who calls any for me? Is that so man? I say, Be. You know, to do a thing like that. But here was Muhammad Sassama. He didn't ask this woman one single question. I want to ask you why you think. I gave it, gave it all. The answer is in the hadith, which I never knew before and saw before, so I don't expect you to do it in three minutes, but maybe I'm in mean, all your brains. I can feel it warming up. <laughs> maybe that's why you put the, the fan on. I mean, don't you think the first thing the Prophet should have said to her was Fatima? Uh, You're a good woman, you know, your wife is. Good man, and you attest to the fact he's a very good man. Nafa plus you. He prays behind the prophet five times a day. Doesn't beat you. Does not hurt you. Is it for shaitan? <laughs> like the father would say to you, is it for shaitan? <laughs> no kidding. Why do you think the prophet never asks him? Because he can't tell. Sure. Hmm? She tells him that he's a good man. It means he's. I don't love you. Hmm? Alright. That is true. 
What the brother is saying is true. That he's a good man, but I don't love him. But that's what the answer is in the in the, what we're talking about, the goodness of the man. In other words, why the prophet didn't ask any questions was she did not come and complain about him. I think if she came and said, my man slut me, my man, my husband doesn't nafaka me, my husband doesn't make salah, my husband is on drugs, my husband is this, then she, I think then the problem is lost. Give me an example or tell me something more about it. She didn't. She came to say that he was a good man. She did not love him. The Prophet immediately understood. You see, the wisdom. The Prophet immediately knew. He didn't have to ask any more questions. He knew. This woman is coming. She said, Look at a good husband. Immediately the Prophet knew the love was gone. And Allah says, What does Allah say about marriage in the Quran? وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا مَوَدَّتَ Allah says, I place love and affection. What did Allah put first? Mawadda. Love. And if the love is gone, it's not marriage. End of story. So the Prophet knew that no matter what I'm going to ask her, the love is gone. What are they called in the English law? In the African law? The marriage has broken down irretrievably. No way you can say it. 